Well, hello there. It has been a long time coming, this video, but I'm finally filming a tour of the inside. The outside is the vehicle. It's a Toyota 4Runner. Um, what is this one? A TRD Off-Road. I know my car. And it's a 2022. I bought it new, and I love it. It has traveled now over 11,000 miles with me. Started in uh, Chicago and drove west to Oregon and up through Washington State and up to Canada to Vancouver area, Whistler, and then across to uh, Banff in mid Canada, you know, and then down through Montana and across the north mid US, uh, North Dakota, Minnesota. to the East Coast, through all those states. I ended up in New York for a little bit, and then down the Eastern Seaboard through Virginia to Florida, where it spent the first, the winter months, essentially. And now, I am in Florida, but I'm leaving Florida, and I'm heading back west, but now through the Southern US. So we're doing a, doing a full loop. I don't really have a full plan for that. But anyway, that's where the car has been. And I've been using it for going on nine months now, eight, nine months in this capacity as a, an adventure vehicle, right? To uh, drive long hauls in, to adventure in, to go down dirt roads in, <laughs> to drive lots of highway miles on, and also to do camp in and from. So what I'm gonna share with you today is a look at how I've had it set up for these past nine months. I'm already I mean, it's for the past few months, I've been thinking about changing things around a bit, but to be honest, I've been waiting <laughs> until I had the perfect situation to film this video. And here in the middle of, I don't even quite know if I'm saying this right, but Tate's Hill State Park in Florida, in uh, near the Gulf, I'm on the Gulf Coast here, in a primitive camping site, and it's very quiet, and I'm the only one here, and it's flat, and I'm able to film it, so finally can film it. I just really, even just personally wanted to preserve what the car looks like on the inside, how I started with it. I have some ideas for it moving forward to maximize storage. When I first got on the road, I didn't anticipate leaving clothes in it, but I do so I can just fly to the car with a carry-on backpack with my like camera gear and my laptop and stuff and everything essentially that I need is in it. Uh, so with all that being said, let's Let's go in, let's take a look. I'll just give you a little bit of a, an exterior view here. She's very, very comfortable. We will start on the driver's side and make our way around clockwise. And this feels like an important detail, but I do call her Blue. That is her name. Okay, so driver's side to me is about comfort and accessibility to most used or needed items. Um, I love the seats, they're very comfortable, but I did almost immediately add in this, um, this looks like a Turkish towel actually, just because I wear shorts a lot of the time when I'm driving and it gets a bit sweaty feeling. It does. Um, I think this is actually real leather. Don't ask me. I didn't pay attention to those details. It's very nice. I just need something to sit on that isn't that material. Um, so that's what's there. Uh, dashboard and everything is, you know, stock that came with the car. I didn't do any adjustments there. I do have my little, my little ones with me. My pup, Winnie, and my children all come with me on the road there. And, um, I try to keep this pretty clear. You know, I don't really store a lot right here. I do have a first aid kit within easy reach. This actually came with the car. Uh, it's easy reach to my feet. So it's right under the seat there. On the side door, I just have some change. It's just kind of random. I have a little, uh, flip knife and an umbrella, a pair of light liner gloves. This is um, running sunglasses that you can really use for anything. And this actually came with my travel, my Berkey Go system. This is a portable um, water filtration uh, water bottle. So that's just kind of if necessary. I usually have quite a bit of water on me at any given point, even right now when I'm running particularly low because I haven't stocked up in a while on, you know, doing these sorts of trips. I haven't, I just haven't filled my whole jug, which I'll show you, it's in the back. 
Um, I still have plenty of water, so no shortage there. So let's come in for a second and let me show you in here. Um, I do keep an atlas. This is a United States Road Atlas. Um, this is an adventure version, so it does highlight all of the parks and stuff. Comes in real handy because sometimes there's just no service. I used it today, actually. My dashboard here, my center console, really. Uh, this is all stock with the car, so I didn't make any modifications there. There is a moonroof, um, which is nice when there's stars. I mostly keep it closed to keep the temperature regulated in the car. Uh, but it's nice to open at night when I'm sleeping in the back. Uh, it's, things are not going to be perfectly clean because this is a car that I use in a lot of outdoorsy situations, so just keep that in mind. I've got two cup holder situation, um, so I've got my water bottle there, and then, you know, I just had a chai, so <laughs> there it is. Uh, and that's just a little wooden sticker I bought. And this little area here, this little um, pocket here is where I keep my most reach for things. So I have a chapstick, I have my wallet, I usually have my keys on me when I'm out and about in the car, but when I'm driving I keep them right there because this is one that you don't need to put the key into the the thing, right? Into the ignition. And this is a pop socket for my phone. It just can't have it on the phone while it's charging. Speaking of which, this is my little charging situation. The phone, the MagSafe phone, magnetizes right to that, and then I can plug in with my USB cord that I have. I bought an extra long one, so I wanted to charge and move with my phone. I, it could come with me a little bit. Um, in this section here, I have hairbrush, and I use this to clean lenses and sunglasses. It's just like a little case for your sunglasses. And then there's quite a bit packed into my center console. Um, yes. Let's reiterate that it's not really organized. So I've got a little pouch if I wanted to just go out with like a phone and keys and stuff and not bring a whole kit and caboodle. Oh, I've got a lot of stuff in here, you guys. i got my National Parks pack. Uh, pass. I've got wet wipes. I've got another GoPro. I've got big scissors in here. These are car wipes. I've got face masks. I've got window wipes for the the windshield if I want. I've got hand sanitizing spray. This is a mini band-aid kit. Some lotions, some mints, different kinds of mints, some gum, a pen, um, and then my pass for my, uh, you know, to pay for tolls. This little guy is kind of like my little emergency-esque camping kit. I will take this when I'm going on longer hikes in more remote places because it has things like a water filtration, portable water filtration thing, my Kula cloths, um, emergency uh, poncho, a poop shovel, <laughs> a little bit of a paracord there. So that's just, I keep that in there just in case I need it, but it's also something that I will pop into my hiking bag if necessary. And um, this is a charger for the car adapt for the, uh, what do they call this? A cigarette lighter charger for my Jackery to charge it while the car is up running. I've never once had to do that, ever. But I have it there in case I need it. A lot going on in the passenger seat because it's obviously the most accessible to me when I'm driving. Just show you a couple, I do have some food items up here, but that's one of the things I'm hoping to reorganize is kind of like my pantry situation. But I keep this little cooler. This is a little Hydro Flask cooler. Oh, there's where that went. Oh, I've been looking for that. And that's where I keep my road snacks or any um, pantry goods that I don't want getting too hot. So I don't keep ice in there, um, but I have a lot of Swedish fish apparently, and um, some honey and some peanut butter and things like that. Um, yeah, always good to have a chips for the road and other things that I access a lot from here. I have a backup water, so that's this um, Nalgene has fully uh, filtered water in it and I also reach for the tissues quite a bit and I reach for the GoPro that I have on this little Joby Gorilla Pod, like a mini Gorilla tripod that I will put up there to get my road shots. That's easy for me to reach during transit. And we'll go around to look at the rest of the stuff. The passenger side, and I can show you a little bit more about what's in here. So this is a collapsible basin. I have the water, this like collapsible water cube in it. It's not because I need, it needs to be in it. It's just a good place to store it. So that's why it's there. This is my auxiliary water. This is non-filtered. Um, I have not yet had to use it. I believe that's a five gallon cube if I'm not mistaken. Um, and the claspable tub is really in case I wanted to wash something. Um, I would have my own kind of portable sink. 
Uh, but I keep them up here for emergency purposes, for easy access. Um, but yeah, good to have extra water on hand. I don't think I would feel comfortable driving without a reserve of water. Beyond that, it's kind of hard to see, but I've got all of the shoes that live in the car. Right now I have two different pairs of hiking shoes. I have a taller pair that I've used for the past year and a brand new pair of shorter ones that I'm gonna be training in with this summer for a mountain challenge that I'm participating in. And I have two pairs of sandals. My Tevas, which are really just great camp shoes and I wear them out and about too. And then back there, I can't remember the brand, I think it's Zero. Those are really flat little sandals that are perfect if I'm hiking and I know I'm going to be going to a place where I want to wear something on my feet to get into the water or something because they're very small and don't take up a lot of space or are very heavy. And then right here is my little trash can. This is actually a um, compost bin, uh, but I use that as my little trash bin. It's a little dented now. <laughs> I think it got a little beat up in transit, uh, but that's easy to pull in and out at camp. And then I have a couple more little, I think I have one or two little Gorilla Pod. I keep calling Gorilla Pod, but uh, Joby. Um, I have a lot of camera gear, okay? <laughs> Those things stay in the car, though. Um, here, I don't always, this comes home with me, obviously. This is my um, filming kit, uh, but here you can get a better look at the this little guy um, with all the kind of various and sundry things I have stored in it. Um, some marshmallows. I mean, the last time I really was using this car, but until now, was in the winter time, and I was making a lot of hot chocolate. But uh, really nice to have that. And when I leave and I clean out the cooler that's in the back seat, this fits right into the cooler perfectly and keeps the cooler door bumped up a little bit so I don't worry about things getting mildewy in there in case it's not fully dry when I'm leaving. I, I always empty it out and clean it out right, but sometimes there's a drop of water. It only takes one drop to make mildew. Uh, but it also kind of keeps everything in there protected while the car is parked um, in between trips. I don't have much in my, um, what's this called, glove box, aside from the essentials. Um, I have some stuff that came with the car, manuals, a couple of tools that came with the car. I do have another map in here, a United States road map here. Oh, you know what? Never can have too many maps. I have my registration, of course, and insurance info, and then I have another pair of sunglasses, just in case just in case. And on the door here, I've got um, some more band-aids, because, you know, I guess we just can never have too many, and another auxiliary water. Okay, moving to the back. Uh, this is the back passenger side, and I keep the bed on this side. Um, I can't exactly remember the name of the, I think it's a Hess mattress? I'm not sure. I will link everything below. Um, but I do keep my window shades. These are WeatherTech shades. They are custom made to go with the model of the car, which is a really nice thing to have. They do them for all different kinds of years and makes and models. Um, so they're actually a local Chicago company too, which is nice. I keep them out on top of the bed situation most of the time. I will put them up to keep my car cool when camping, um, except for the windows that I'm opening, which I will put bug nets on, especially where I am right now. Uh, but they do fit really nicely under the mattress as well. In fact, I have the ones for the rear passenger and rear driver seat windows in there because that's where I put my bug nets. Speaking of which, should be a bug net right here. I have one on each side for these windows and they are great. I'll show you, I've shown them before, but they just like pop over the window, the whole window, and I keep it cracked so I get nice ventilation. Interrupting the tour just a bit because I've got camp set up now. To show you, these are the bug nets that just, they just slip right over the window. You don't have to do anything fancy. Um, and when I sleep, I'll, I'll have the window up a little bit more most of the time. It's not gonna be that hot tonight, so. But I have them on both sides of the car and I've put up my, um, the reflecting side of my WeatherTech window shades. They have a black side too for cold weather if you want to keep the car warmer on the inside. Oh, I didn't push that up all the way. It does come up flush to the window. I have that along the front side of the car and then you can see on the back here my little makeshift back window <laughs> bug net. Like I said, that's just the netting that you can buy for screens and um, magnets. Magnets on there. That's it. This here might look like a pillow, but actually what's in there is my down sleeping bag. This was a tip I got from other, from road lifers essentially, um, which is really, really handy. I have yet to use it because I haven't done any 
um, backpacking in this with this when I'm traveling in this vehicle, but I do plan on doing that hopefully this year. Um, so it's just great place to store it also provides extra pillow this mattress doesn't go all the way to the end on purpose because I store as you can see I have quite a few backpacks so um, it's nice to have that extra support there the pillow that I sleep on however is the same brand as the mattress and it's a really nice pillow I think pillows are so important and because I sleep in this car a lot and I will even bring that pillow into Airbnbs when I'm on the road um, it was important to me to have a nice pillow you know that's an individual thing, but you know, it works. Here's a little fan, it's actually a desktop fan, and this was another tip from a, a different road life or a YouTuber. Um, and it's a USB plug-in, so I can plug it into my Jackery. It works great if I need a little extra breeze because I can open up the, these, uh, you know, for a cross breeze with that window and this one, and I can open up the back one too because I have a net for that. Um, but to have a front breeze to, to just a four wind direction, right? A <laughs> four direction wind. Okay, on the door here, this popped off of one of my lanterns and I had to figure out how to pop that back in. But it's kind of my little electronics pocket here. Um, I've got the charger for my uh, phone and watch. I have another pair of scissors, my interval timer, and headphones for running, um, which will come back and forth with me. Um, they'll go home when I'm done. A cord, the USB cord that I leave in here, and a, another part of my tripod. The tripod's out right now, but it stores really nicely right there. Um, and I do leave that one in the car because it's heavy to travel with. And then I have so many backpacks, I know, but I've got my bigger hiking backpack, a smaller hiking backpack, my running hydration vest, and this is my travel carry-on backpack. And they just all stack really nicely there. For that reason, I don't really keep anything in, I don't know if you're gonna see it, but the, um, the back, the seat pocket, the like back of the seat pocket, um, because I just can't really access it, but I don't find that I need that space. And what I did, if you missed the video that I put up last year where I showed how I put together the car, um, you know, how I got it set up like this, I did build a little custom platform, which you'll see in the back in a second. Um, and I took out the bottoms of the back row seats, but I left the tops. And that is something that eventually might come out if I wanted to build out a more elaborate platform with storage underneath. I just don't think I really need it right now, so I'm leaving it as is. All right, let's take a look in the back. Let me take out the um, window covers so you get a better sense of that, actually. It doesn't, doesn't that look nicer? It does. There's a lot going on back here, okay? Just no joke, there's a lot going on. But this is ample space for me to sleep in and I'm very comfortable in here. Even with the double pillow situation, the length works for me, but I am on the shorter side, so keep that in mind. Um, I do keep this Mexican blanket at the end here. I believe that's what they're called, um, because I use it as a staging area when I have luggage that I'm bringing with me. If I'm not camping or whatever, and I have like a big old suitcase, I'll put it on there just to keep the bed clean. It's mainly just to keep the bed clean kind of thing. <laughs> Actually, I have quite a few blankets, but, uh, well, really only two, I suppose, plus the comforter on the bed. The bed doesn't look, like, super tidy, but I did sleep in it last night. Here's all the storage in the back here, and this is kind of more of my, um, what do we call it, leisure, leisure stuff. So I have this little cup that um, is where I store, like, my jewelry and my AirPods and stuff that, um, you know, I don't want running around, but it's also easy access when I'm in bed. I have a couple of uh, pop-up lanterns and a headlamp here. This was from a mountain challenge I did last year. I don't know, it's still there. I have a few books. I have a journal there. This is actually for peeing standing up, which comes in handy sometimes. And those are the magnets that go to the system I have to attach a bug net to my back hatch here, the hatch window. This is all a bunch of stuff that I've saved from the past nine months of travel um, for documenting and I didn't actually use. So that's probably gonna get cleaned out and resorted. And I have the journal that I am using more currently here. And this com these journals come back and forth with me. Uh, this is an extra Nalgene. If you're a camper or a backpacker, you might know of a, having a pee jar. 
comes in handy sometimes. I haven't had to use it in that capacity, but I keep it here. Um, so far, I've only used it for extra water. Once it gets pee in it, I won't use it for extra water anymore, even with cleaning, because I don't know. But that's why it's here. It's in case I don't feel safe enough to get out of my car to pee. So there you have it. And then wipes, I think, are Road Tripper's best friend. I've got uh, baby wipes, and these are face wipes that I use. I don't typically wash my face um, when I'm camping. Um, and then I have these, uh, I have this little thing of uh, string little globe lights that I have yet to figure out if I'm actually ever going to put up in the car or not. I just never feel like I need them. So I do have a lot of lighting sources. Okay, there's an awful lot packed into this side. So I'm just going to tell you about what you can see right here and then we'll go in more specifically and pull things out. So this is my water filtration station. This is a Dometic um, water jug. It just got such, it's like expensive, right? But it got such great reviews about water not getting mildewy or weird in it. And I've been using it for nine months with the car sitting in places for a long time and it works great. This is my um, travel water filtration system. It's a, a Berkey Go, I think is what it's called. Um, so when I am at a water source, um, I will filter it out and it makes about one Nalgene's worth at a time. Um, so I started filling it up yesterday because I'm just freshly back on the road. So I probably have maybe about a quarter of this full, um, but I will be in a place um, in the next day or two where I can finish filling it up for the season and then I will just continue to fill it up whenever necessary. But what I do when I want to get water out of it is I just put it on its side and it has that little spigot there. Um, and I have my little AG1 bottle there that I brought from home with me. Okay. Oh, there's a lot more. <laughs> so these two bins, um, the bottom one is camping stuff and the top one is kitchen stuff. And then I have my little Eureka camping stove on top wrapped in a blanket. And I have a sand cloud blanket and this towel I use to clean um, up this area of my car because dirt can get in and out of the car a lot from that spot. And for instance, just now I was going down dirt road and it it got very dirty, so um, I just swept it off. So that, that needs to be washed um, the next time I, I do a laundry. Ooh, a butterfly. Oh, that was a pretty butterfly. Sorry, I just got real distracted. So here you can kind of see the platform. If you look under the bed here, I have the yoga mat I use most frequently. I have another yoga mat that's um, that I can put underneath it. If I want to do any sort of movement or stretching or yoga out here, I would put this one down first because I'm not so concerned about it getting dirty and stuff. This one will come in and out of hotels and Airbnbs with me. Uh, but it tucks under there really nicely. I don't feel it when I sleep. And then here's where I store the bug net for the back. And it's basically just, uh, what do they call it? Screen netting that I bought from the hardware store and I cut to size for my window. The windows in the Forerunners do come down. Um, when the car is on, I can roll that down just like any other window. I have some puff tarts there because that's been my breakfast of choice on this trip and that's what's there. Okay, tucked into the side here, this is one of those things that comes back and forth with me. This has my medications and vitamin supplements things in it, um, so I leave it there uh, for easy access. And this is personal stuff and then back here I have kind of a little dry pantry. Um, so pancake mix, more hot chocolate, more tea. I think I've got some oatmeal packets back there, some noodle cups. Um, it's stuff that I don't feel weird about leaving in the car when I'm on the road. Um, or when it's parked places, I should say. So it's just a little nook there. But you can see, I don't know, yeah, you can see from this angle, I still have the seat up on this side because it's a two-part fold. Um, and uh, what I'm planning on doing is putting that seat down and kind of rearranging things. But that will be the next car tour whenever we get to that. Okay, I moved some things around so I could show you my kitchen bin here. This is mostly tools. I do have some tea in there, pot holder, that's a plate. This is a set of pots, which come in really handy. I have some uh, paper towels, the propane that I use to go, you know, to fuel the camp stove, and another little, that's to heat up small amounts of things, like a little bit of soup or a hot beverage or something. This is my utensil set. It's from Hydro Flask. I have some 
condiments, some oil and ketchup and packets. These are my knives. I'm not going to pull everything out, but I will link as much as I can here. This I've often talked about as the MVP of my kitchen kit here, and this is the collapsible electric kettle. And it is fantastic. I only boil water in it. Um, I plug it into my Jackery. It works like a charm. I do also have in here, oh, I have a bowl with a lid and some seasonings. I don't know. I have some, um, oh, and I have a, a lighter, but I have a paprika and uh, everything but the bagel and some salt um, and another hand sanitizer, this little mug I love from Hydro Flask. I have some um, noon that I keep in here that feels fine. I do have my jet boil in here and that's for camping. Um, that's a nice option too if I don't really feel the need to put up to put out the whole um, the Eureka big camping stove. But everything fits in here really really nicely. And I have oh this is an important kind of camping thing. This bag has extra baggies and gloves in it in case I get to a campsite and it's dirty um, and it has garbage bag in there too. I can pick things up and throw them away. Do not litter. I do not leave anything outside. That is not natural to be outside, friends. It's just not cool. Alright, on the side here is where I have stacked up all of my camping um, you know, equipment that is more structured that I wouldn't like carry on a backpacking trip with me. But I have my moonshade, which I used at the Dave Matthews concert camping situation at the Gorge, which came in so handy. I loved it so much. I bought the side um, thing for it. I've got my Helinox. Um, this is the that's the table, that's the chair, and there is a, the car bumps up here, so there's nothing underneath that. I have some extra bags over there. This is a um, mat that can be used on sand, and sand just goes through it. I forget what it's called. Um, and that right there is the side piece that I just bought to the moon shade, which just like magnetically attaches to the top of the car and works like a dream. And I do have some Epsom salts left over from my last race that I didn't want to throw out because that seemed wasteful. Next time I have a place with a bathtub, I will bring them in. You saw these fall down. These are my stack of hats that I keep usually perched up against that. Stays much better when there's uh, stuff there. In here, like I said, my camping stuff. Um, that's my dog's water bottle when she came with me. My tent, my sleeping pad. I've got some toilet paper. I've got some other ways to... Um, I don't really want to take everything out of this one, but I've got all my camping gear, all my backpacking gear, I should say, plus a few extras like a citronella candle and um, the ch other charger, the plug-in charger for my Jackery, and uh, yeah, those portable aqua tablets, um, some bungee cords, uh, and a tarp. Things that are just handy to have. You can see the stove better. It's a two burner. I really like it. It's worked out really well for me thus far. It's nice at a campsite like this where there's a table if I want to set up and cook. Okay, last but not least is this side of the car, the driver back seat area. There's a lot going on back here, okay? Um, so there's another tub. I'm not going to dig through all of that right now. Uh, but underneath it, I do have stuffed the bug netting for this window. Um, this tub has all of my winter gear in it right now, so winter coats and hats and gloves and things like that. And there's a couple other bits and bobs in there that I don't use very much that might not stay in the car forever. Uh, but that's what's there. Like I said, I do have this seat up. Putting it down would open up, you know, seven, eight inches of space for me. So I'm thinking about how to reorganize this side of the car. That side of the car is going to stay the same. This side of the car, I'm going to completely reorganize and maybe get some different storage options since I started adding in clothes. So you'll see I've got packing cube among packing cube of clothes and they are organized by type. So this is all hiking, this is all fitness, these are undergarments and socks. And then this is like normal clothes, I have just one for normal clothes and then I even have things stacked up. Uh, a couple sweatpants, sweatshirts, a light jacket. And I even use the nooks and crannies behind this. This is my dirty laundry bag. And this is my swimming stuff. I've got a puffy vest uh, shoved down there. This is my toiletry kit. It stays in the car. This is my shower kit. Separate. Because I don't always shower on the road. It's not always available. And then this has my rain gear in it. My rain pants and my rain jacket. And also just an auxiliary poncho. You know, it's a lot of stuff. 
that I've packed into this car. But it works out fine. The door here, I have all of my different bug spray and um, these are sunscreen, a little reusable tote that comes back and forth with me in my backpack, but it's great when I'm at a campsite with like a bathroom and I'm taking clothes and my shower kit and everything. Comes in real handy. These are running things. Um, so, toe separators and my road ID, which I will use for running and hiking every time. Just feels like an important thing. And I have another roll of paper towels kind of shoved down there. These are um, packable uh, duffel bags. This, this one lives in the car all the time because there's often where I will be on a road trip like this one where I'm alternating between camping and Airbnbs. And so when I get to an Airbnb destination, I'll put in all the things I need, like my toiletries and my clothes and such, in the duffel. This one came with me this time. This normally stays at home because um, I had to check a bag with some of the things I was bringing for the car this time. It's a little hard to show you, but behind here I do have a nice selection of Ziploc bags in various sizes. I try not to use them that much, but sometimes it's just really handy. And also tucked in here, this I just brought with me are some nutrition hydration things. That's that. And then the cooler. The cooler's right here. And I don't think the cooler's gonna stay right here. <laughs> But I've shared how I packed this before. I put a bag of ice on the bottom. The things that need to stay coldest go on top of the bag of ice and everything else goes on top of that. Um, I even have a little thing of aloe in there that came with the last hotel stay I had. And there was a little travel bottle of aloe, so I took that with me. You know Pillow Bear comes, and if you're like, Jen, where is your Jackery? It's right there. So when I bring it out at night to charge, I will put it on top of my um, cooler when I'm all done um, eating and accessing stuff in there, and that's where it will rest for the night. Uh, but it's a perfect spot for it to fit right there uh, behind the center console. Um, not able to show you right now because I really don't want to pull it out, but I do under the seat, under the seat uh, accessed from this side, I have a... Uh, an air compressor, like a, a portable air compressor. You can plug it into the car's AC uh, out, output or I could use my Jackery to plug it in. And I also have a an electric battery jumper. Very, It's fully charged. It holds a charge for something like two years or something. I check it every few months just to make sure. Um, but those are things that I think are really important to have if you're off-roading at all. And just, just to have the electric the like portable car jumper so you can jump yourself if you're stuck somewhere, also really important. Well, that's it, that's the whole kit and caboodle. You've seen pretty much everything. I didn't show you quite everything for security reasons, but uh, I think it's important to take precautions and to protect yourself in the way that you feel comfortable with and that you are um, well equipped to manage. So just keep that in mind, um, but yeah. That's the inside tour of my adventure rig as it is in this first stage of travel as I'm entering the second year with it. Like I said, I have some plans to reorganize that driver's side back area to just be a little, because I added so many clothes. Like I didn't start out with all those clothes on my journey. <laughs> they just, it just made more sense as I've been going to leave them in the car because I don't need them at home. Um, instead of dragging things back and forth, it's really nice to get on an airplane just with a backpack. Like I said, sometimes I do check a bag. Um, I wanted to bring a new switchblade with me this time. That's not something I can bring on the airplane, so that's why I had to check the bag, really. But I also brought some other layering options and hiking things that I just, I could have brought on the plane if I didn't have that switchblade, but because I was traveling with a technically a weapon. I, I couldn't um, carry that on the plane. But it is really nice to go on a trip with just my backpack that has my camera gear and my journals and my computer in it. And that's all I'm bringing. And it's just, it's really liberating. And I am very, 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 very blessed and feel very fortunate to be able to do what I do. I know it's unusual and not a lot of people quite understand. Uh, so that being said, I thought I would open up the floor a bit. I haven't done a Q&A that's specific to this kind of travel. I wanted to, but honestly I wanted to wait a bit until I had a little bit more experience under my belt. I'm still very much a newbie at all of this stuff, I feel like, but I have learned some things along the way. And if you have any um, travel-related questions, camping, hiking, um, 
adventure vehicle <laughs> I don't know whatever any any questions related to this and kind of what I'm doing um, with my content these days and, and how I'm traveling currently I'd love to answer them for you in a Q&A so please put your questions below I'll also probably reach out on Instagram with a question box when this video goes up but uh, I would love to hear what questions you have, if you have any, and I'd love to sit, sit down and chat with you about them. We could talk about it. And like I said, after I make some changes and live in that for a while, I'll give you another tour if it's interesting to you. I don't know if this was interesting. I hope it was. I hope it came out okay. This was really the most ideal situation for me to film it. It would have been better if it was a little shadier, but hopefully the lighting worked out. You could see enough to get a sense of it. Um, I want to reiterate that I feel very, very safe, secure, and comfortable in my car. And that is partly based on personality, but also partly based on um, how I've set it up. And the experiences I had, I've had have given me uh, more confidence. Just basic safety, always listen to your gut, would be my number one tip if something feels off. Go somewhere else. There's always somewhere else to go. You know, just go somewhere else. Uh, so listen to that. Even if other people might say, oh, you're being silly, whatever. No, you listen to your gut. Because at the end of the day, even if nothing happens, you want to feel comfortable in order to enjoy your experience, right? Um, I always park with my the nose of the car heading out for an easy exit, right? <laughs> Um, and when I tuck in for the night, and I do choose to sleep in my car most of the time, unless I'm backpacking, which like I said, I hope to do more of this year. It's been now a couple years since I've gone on a backpacking trip. I bring everything into my car before I tuck in for the night. I don't leave anything out, even if I'm going to be spending a couple of days. I bring it all in, um, with the exception of like the Dave Matthews camping situation, where that was like caravan camping, and I... It just, I left things out, <laughs> like my moonshade I left up and all of that, because um, that just made sense. But in this sort of situation, even at a campsite I was at last night, which was more established camping, um, I pack it all in so that if, in the hopefully unlikely event, I feel so insecure, unsafe that I have to leave, I can literally hop into the front seat and go. And I have, can go straight out, if possible, and everything's with me and I don't have to think about anything hanging off the car or to the side or whatever. So that's just some basic precautions that I take. Also, I really heavily rely on reviews. I recommend iOverlander for reviews of camping spots and wild camping spots too. That's a really great resource um, and reviews can be very, very helpful with that. Um, reviews are also very, very helpful for Airbnb or hotels or anything that you do. So I, I, I rely on people's, the spoken word of the people and uh, oh, it's just so much fun. I love, I love my car so much. I hope you enjoyed coming to see the inside of it today and I will see you real soon. Let me know if you have any questions for the upcoming Q&A and happy adventures to all of you. Happy trails. Take really good care, you guys. Bye.